A binary search tree is a particular kind of binary tree that supports binary search. What is binary search? It's a strategy for finding a value in some sorted collection. And the strategy is check the middle and eliminate half. So let's say I knew this list was sorted in advance, and I wanted to know whether the number 20 appeared in it. Of course I could go through and check 20 against every single value, but there's a better way. I could check 20 against the middle. Since 20 is larger than 8, I can not only eliminate 8, but also 1, 2, and 4, because I know the list is sorted. At which point I look at the remaining values, and I check the one in the middle. Is 20 greater than or less than 32? It's smaller, which means it's not 32, and it's also not anything above 32, so we can eliminate this without even checking 20 to see if it's the same or not. Finally, I compare 20 to 16. I've now run out of values in the list, and so I can guarantee that 20 is not in the list. If I were looking for the number 4 instead, again, I would check first to see if 4 is 8. It's smaller than 8, so we eliminate 8, 16, and 32 from the possibilities. Now I'll check whether 4 is greater than, less than, or equal to 2. It's greater than 2, which means I know it's greater than whatever this is, even without even looking at that value. And finally, the only remaining value is 4, and so I realize that 4 is 4, and so 4 does appear in that list. So that's what's called binary search. It requires you to have a sorted list. When you have a sorted list, the time required to figure out whether an element appears in that list, written as a theta expression in the length of the list, is what? Well, it's theta log n, because you're actually, with each comparison, getting rid of half of the list, or at least half of what remains of the list that you're searching. So that means the list can be twice as long as it was before, and it'll only take one more step to query it to see if it contains a particular value. A binary search tree isn't a sorted list, but instead a tree that has a particular property similar to a sorted list. A binary search tree is a binary tree where each root value anywhere in the tree is larger than all the entries in its left branch and smaller than all entries in its right branch. Here are several examples of the same collection of numbers, the odd numbers through 11, placed into a binary tree. So here you can see that 7 is greater than everything over here and less than everything over here. And that's true of 3 as well, and 9. And likewise, in this tree, 3 is less than everything over here. 7 is less than everything here, but greater than 5. And the same property holds for this as well. So there isn't just one binary search tree for a collection of numbers. There may be many. But they all have the same property, which is useful for when you're trying to identify whether a number appears in the tree. So the first thing we're going to do is take a sorted collection of numbers and build a balanced binary search tree out of it. This is going to construct a binary search tree from a sorted list. So I would call something like binary search tree on 1, 2, 3. And it would give me a binary tree with 2 at the root. And the left branch would contain 1, which is less than 2. And the right branch would contain 3, which is greater than 2. This is not the only binary search tree, but it's balanced. OK, how do we make it balanced? Well, we find the midpoint. The midpoint is on an index in s. That's the length of s divided by 2. And then we're going to return a binary tree with s midpoint value at the root. It has a left and a right branch. And the left branch and the right branch of a binary search tree are both binary search trees, where 1 includes all of the values starting at the beginning of the list up to but not including the midpoint. And the right branch is everything greater than s mid, so that has to be the binary search tree starting at midpoint plus 1 and going to the end. Now I've just written a recursive function, which means I need a base case. 
And the base case here is that if not s, meaning s is an empty list, then I'll just return an empty binary tree. So what happens when I build a balanced binary search tree out of 1, 2, and 3? I get the structure I expected. And if I build one out of all the numbers from 0 up through 9, then I get 5 at the root. And then I get everything that's less than 5 to the left. And I get everything that's greater than 5 to the right. If I get the contents of a binary search tree, well, that puts everything to the left before the root and then everything to the right, and we see the values in their original order. So here's a discussion question. How do you get the largest element in a binary search tree? Here's a template. See if you can figure it out. Here are a couple of binary search trees to look at in order to get you started. Notice this one has 7 and 8 to its left, but 8 is to the right of 7. Here's one way to write it. If the right is empty, then you know you've reached the highest point. You just return the root value. Otherwise, you go right. So starting from here, we would then make a recursive call on this subtree, and then make a recursive call on this subtree. And here, there's no right branch, and so 11 is the largest value. If we start here, we go to the right. Now this is not a leaf, but it has no right subbranch. Its right subbranch is empty. And so it is the largest value in the whole binary search tree. Here's an extra challenge. What's the second largest element in a binary search tree? I'll give you a hint. We need a one case for this structure and another case for this structure. See if you can fill in the blanks. In this structure, we see that there is a leaf to the right. And that leaf to the right must therefore be the largest element so the root value is the second largest element. It's larger than everything down here and larger than everything up here or over here. In this case, we find that there is a subtree with an empty right branch. So that must be the largest value. The second largest must be somewhere in its left subtree. So if we ever find that t.right is btree.empty, we just find the largest value in the left subtree, and that will be the second largest value in the whole tree. Finally, if neither of these cases applies, then we return the second of right. So that means the second largest value is somewhere to the right of where we are now. So that gets us from here to here, at which point we uh, notice that this is the largest value, and so we find the largest value in its left subbranch in order to discover the second largest in the whole tree.